Hi Andrew. I just spilled some coffee, so I decided to restart the session. Coffee. Hello, Rob. Yeah, no, I managed to spill it. It's, it's too embarrassing to have on tape, but now mentioning it's on some tape. I'm going to go make it. Good idea. So, Andrew, uh, now that the rendering quality is much, much better on the Vision Pro, I've been playing around more, uh, especially in the read view. And holy moly, um, it's really good. So, right. yeah, having the render up is, is amazing. It's a game changer. Yeah, it, it's yeah. Mm -hmm. And what you've done is, is really, really fantastic. So today I see you have electricity. Dana doesn't. So she's going to be. Hang on, let me just quieten my device here. Okay. Yeah, I ended up not having, I, I tried, but I ended up not having an update um, that's like presentable for today. Um, and, okay. Like I've, I've got kind of the stuff sort of working, but it, it breaks as soon as you start to function with it. And it's, it's not very good for testing because people would get caught up on the errors rather than the, the stuff we want to test. So I have noticed. I guess next week. I have noticed. Well, so here's the thing. Next Tuesday, I have a very important demo. Yes. Uh, it's something that I mentioned before vaguely, but uh, I got a reminder email and I hadn't mentioned it uh, to you or the group. Uh, it's for the faculty at my university. So what I think we should do today is to go through your brilliant work and just talk about polishes of what we already have primarily. Because yeah, those... I saw that list that you, you gave us um, or, or gave me in that little chat with Mark and Dini. Um, yeah. And I, I plan to get to that as soon as I can. Yeah, I no, think that's, that's part of the polish you're talking about. Yes, yes. And to discuss it, of course, with the team to make sure that, you know, we agree on those. To me, they're obvious, but there may be obvious reasons why they're not obvious as well. And I have a few, um, a few other things to talk about today. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to share a screen while it's just the two of us. It's all recorded anyway, so we get a little bit of a head start. Um, oh, here's Dini. Perfect. I'll stop then for a minute. Hi, Dini. How's your? Fun. Have you got your power back, or are you on? Uh... Yeah, it just literally came back on, and the server just came back on. So I was tethering from. That was, that sounded good in the beginning, but now we can't hear um, you. You can hear me. Uh, yeah, I can. Just at the beginning and end of what you said. Yes. Okay. I just I had to. Start restart my server and I'm turning on all my computers right now. It's uh, it was weird. It just went a boom, big boom, and everything in the neighborhood went out. So that's not fun. Well, it's weird because it's not hot here yet. It's not like we're all running air conditioning. Oh. It's still pretty chilly here. Andrew, did lights go out in your neighborhood up in Woodland? Uh -oh. No, no, it's fine. Very strange. Yeah. So we have an agenda for today, guys. Can you believe it? It's not a lot on it. We had one last week, too. Yeah. So, um, Dini, uh, Andrew is not ready to show new stuff today, and I think that's absolutely fine. Uh, but I was reminded that next Tuesday, I'm doing a demo to staff at Southampton. So what I thought we could do today is go through what Andrew has and just polish it, you know, go through smaller things, not think the deep big pictures. I see you nodding, which is nice. I'll repeat that for you, Mark. Um, choose the next week. I'm doing an XR presentation, a demo at our DARE University. And of course, uh, we need to show the work we've done here. So what we've been talking about this morning is to basically spend some time today polishing what we have rather than trying to do big new stuff so that we get like an alpha version one done. Um, and there are some thoughts of that. Uh, that makes sense, right? Cool. There is a um, agenda, very obvious, but here it is. That was my announcement. Any other announcements? I do not have a demo in two weeks. So we're going to be working on our demo too. So oh, oh, remind me, please. Which one's that? The Electronic Literature Organization Conference that's coming up. Fantastic. Oh, that, okay. That's awesome. But so I'm very glad we have uh, next Tuesday then as kind of a dry run for a smaller community. And then we'll see what uh, next Wednesday, 
I'll give some feedback based on what I learned on Tuesday so we can all decide where to spend the next two weeks time to make it ready for ELO. So actually, yeah, I, I, I've got a, a, a quick second, because one reflection I had so sort of after actually funny enough, sort of recent meetings was I don't know where, if anywhere, we've actually recorded. We, we've shot through a lot of things recently, and I'm not sure any of it's really been written down. Um, and a lot, I mean, we found. I think we found some really things amongst amongst which are things that just don't work or don't work as we envisaged. Um, so I, I, I'm just wondering before where that's going to go before it gets. I mean, because I, I don't. I don't think automatic retrieval of of sort of conversation from meetings is going to be powerful enough to capture that months after fact. Yeah. So we do, of course, have the automatic thing. Uh, also, Andrew has been very good. What he writes to us in Slack goes in our meeting record as well. Yeah. So what I'm thinking is, uh, I, I'm going to read the Slack records, and what I'm saying is, I don't think that's capturing some of the things that have been going recently because the automatic thing is sort of fine, but that just gives you uh, means no, basically no, no. probably going to have to go back and re-listen to things. I'm not talking about only that. Andrew, when he writes his notes, last time he wrote. I tried, I failed, which from a research perspective is brilliant. That's what we need to see. The, the, what he writes is also gone into our record. So it's not- No, no, I understand that. But it's not just the automatic stuff. I'm Sorry, let me, let me try again. I'm not saying that hasn't happened. I'm still saying, I don't think that that's a tiny proportion of what we've we've stu stumbled over. And I'm not saying this is a critique of anyone or anything. I'm just, I'm just making a sort of point that I think we're losing a lot of information at the moment that we worked hard to get because I, I'm not aware of any ongoing documentation process that I'm aware of. Uh, you know, various people are writing things down and that's that's a, that's a separate thing because that's thing into Dini. I'm writing a report for Sloan and I'm capturing as much of this as possible. And I'll be giving, sharing a um, copy with all of you to, to tweak soon. So you'll be seeing something. Okay, so I want my neck in now. So I, as long as it's going on behind the curtain, that's fine. <laughs> well, no, Mark, it, it is much appreciated what you're saying because what Dean is doing, what Andrew is writing, and the automatic stuff, you know, we would, I would, I can't speak for anyone else, I would really, really like it if you would write a report every once in a while and just say, here's the thing, I believe we've learned this. Whether I agree with you or not is irrelevant. It's worthwhile material. We'll put it on the same record at the end. Yeah. Of the year. We'll have well, it. My apologies, I would. It's just basically at the moment for the next month, I'm the uh, Hypertext conference has got me completely maxed out. With I mean, all my spare time is, is getting sucked into running the proceedings. Well, that's, that's fine, obviously. Um, so one thing I know, because the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland will from Friday onwards be allowed to purchase the Vision Pro, the App Store has now finally opened. So I've been going through the apps most of them are absolute rubbish in, mm -hmm. in terms of what's put together. The, techn the technical stuff is insanely good. There's the one where you have a jet engine in your room and you can kind of put your hand through it. That is amazing. But it is, of course, a CD-ROM. Good morning, Peter. I uh, missed you on Monday. Very glad you're here today. Um, today, we're going to go through what Andrew's already done with an eye to smaller polishes because I have a, a presentation due in a week at my university and in two weeks there's the ELO conference that's much more important that Dini and Andrew are both going to be presenting at. But yeah, so back to the vision. For instance, I've been asking obviously the community for a few years to do a globe of the earth. There are some apps with it, but they're really rubbish. Part of it is their choice of texture, but also part of it is uh, the native environments whereby if you close kind of the window that anchors it, the whole experience goes away. So that's just an interesting experience. And uh, Mark, when you're in London, we will go through these things together. Um, on the positive sides of that, though, is the uh, stereo video when it's done just for that, not as part of Avatar or something. It works amazingly well. Uh, Mark, please. No, I'm just going to throw in the fact that, I mean, I think people have seen, I, I put another um, HTML, well, article turn into HTML up, and I was just wanted to sort of reflect on the record of what an interesting learning experience that was. Um, I mean, part of the, well, A, I didn't have a, I had no clean text to work from, and B, I had an undocumented format. But nonetheless, just just going in through and 
This is this thing about getting up close and personal with the uh, with the with the data, which we I don't think we do often enough. You begin you begin to see some of the um, sort of challenges or, or the things that we need to address um because the danger of waving our hands and saying well let's assume everything just works is that actually we we, we never look at the, the the practical constraints because some of the stuff will take some it will be some years away some of the stuff we can address now um but it's it's interesting trying to build things that we can actually use rather than things that we can fake pictures of yeah. Uh, so we do both because one gives you the sort of excitement at the end point, but I'm I find it really quite interesting, um, just that process, and I would commend it to others. Agree. Can I, can I mention something about the apps? I told you, I think it was when we first got our headsets, you asked me what I thought, and I said one of the problems I'm having is finding things to do with it. <laughs> There aren't a lot of apps for it, and so I downloaded the, you know the um, the big fighter jet that you can put in your living room, and I played with that. I played with the dinosaur game, which has a dinosaur coming right at you to bite you. I have the uh, various. You can like sit for an hour and meditate in you know Grand Teton. That was fun for an hour. There's not a whole lot of stuff. There's a lot of applications for business. So using Microsoft Word, using Excel spreadsheets, reading PDFs. So there's a lot of business stuff that I use already on my desktop. And now we're using it for the for the virtual environment. So they, they really need to do something to, to improve that. And the big joke, of course, is if you want to play Beat Saber, you put on your Apple headset and then you put on your Meta Quest <laughs> on top of it and then you can play. So, and Andrew, by the way, I need to get you to help me with the code because I had to reorient my controllers and it goes to you and not me, the code. Yes. I can't play Beat Saber till you help me. <laughs> <laughs> Again. Anyway, so that it's interesting, Frodo. They haven't really done much to, to build out apps. No, no, they haven't. And my own experience just doing author, very basic, not a lot of investments. Uh, some of the stuff is easy for me to developer to do. But now there is a bug where the toolbar can't come back or can't get hit. And it's just in the simulation, it's there, but in the app, it's not. And it's a huge issue. So now yeah. we have to fix this. So. It, it's just interesting from a developer's point of view that this is also very, very early days. You know, it's, it's not the end of the world, but also finding out <clears throat> the um, spatial things, I find very difficult. I find it much easier in our work because of the decision you made, Dini. Having a gray background gives us much more space. It's actually quite phenomenally interesting. Uh, the real world environments or your own environment is just not as good as our gray. Just mentioning that I went back through because I'm setting up my class for next fall, going through the Slack channel with everything that people have been posting. So thank you, Peter, and everybody that's been putting articles in there. But the one that the ones I was looking at yesterday, one of them in particular talked about the notion of um, skeuomorphic design. Right, it was a whole like thirty minutes of of design, and mentioning that you know we need things that take us like breadcrumbing from trash cans in real life to trash cans on a desktop. But at the same time, what I think we have hit on is the fact that we can move away from skeuomorphic and get into something a little bit different. So I don't, I don't entirely agree with this person. I think there's a need for the breadcrumbing, I would call it. But at some point, we've got to let go of a physical trash can. You know, we have to let go of that item, of that object, and the way it looks. And I think that's what we're trying to attain with this virtual environment, which I think is great. Yep. So uh, if you all don't mind, I'm going to show you two slides with um, uh, the notion of looking at the writing environment that, excuse me, the reading environment that Andrew has built. Um, uh, uh, Mark, uh, go ahead first. I was just going to say I, I, an interesting reflection, for, again, from really, well, partly from the paper that I wrote 
that's in course of play, hopefully with high text on, on remediation is that I think another thing I'm coming to see, and this I think chimes with Dini's last point about skeuomorphism and things is that I've heard people often sort of say, well, this is fine, we're doing this, but is it any better in XR? And I think in many cases it isn't because in a sense, just using the reading experience we've, we've had um, on a, on a flat screen in sort of, represented in, in XR is not necessarily any better. I mean, it's something that you can do. And if you're sitting on a train or something, I can see the point, but it's not really necessarily an enriching experience. And I think part of the reason for that is that it doesn't offer any, it really doesn't offer anything extra except not having to sit in front of a screen. Um, whereas I'm beginning to see that, although it's difficult to do remediation now because we don't have, we haven't the metadata we need to do it that does begin to get very interesting because I think it begins to, it's a way to get at the sort of dynamism that um, Dini's been referring to in terms of, you know, just seeing the bits I want and pushing stuff, you know, being interact, being able to interact with parts of the information. Um, but we don't, at the moment, what we tend to have is pages worth of text and that's, that's holding us back. Right. Yeah. Fully agree on that, uh, as you know. So um, two slides and many small points, please scream if you can't see it. So this is supposed to be the reading view in Andrew's world already, ignoring backgrounds. Um, this is how I think maybe it should look. The number one difference is, and by the way, all of these are obviously suggestions. I will say it should be thus because it's easier to say, but this is all for discussion. One of the things is that you click on the table of contents to go to a section. So we're now in from gesture to interaction language. If you go to the next one, this closes. So it's a way to kind of, kind of accordion the text. That is because I find having a table of contents on the side, and Mark, thank you for your HTML. I looked at it on the side, I look at it in author, and in general, it isn't that useful to me. It, it depends on the paper. Um, so now you see on the bottom there, there's three things. There's an I, view, and a dot, and a bar. So the notion is, first of all, that the bar acts as the vision OS bar. So we don't have the big bar on the side that we have in Andrew's um, work now. We put it on the bottom. So if you want to move this thing, you point to that and you move it around. So any comments on the point to bottom bar, which is native for vision, users it's similar does that make sense and it's less visually there yeah can I mention what's something? the oh. Dini, sorry can i mention something um you have that bar in a real light gray that's a tradition that's right now that's kind of a hot thing in design to have this really light gray typeface but it's very hard to read um is there some way you can make that darker Oh, we can, all of this is very, very rough, very happy to change it. Okay. Um, in the vision, it's of course white and it's underneath. So we could actually follow that completely because we have a dark background. So the contrast would be back up. Yeah. So th that's, that's one where we could definitely do that. Uh, Mark? I just so I understand. So I'm, I'm seeing what looks suspiciously like a sheet of paper on the screen. Yes, it does so... suspiciously look like a sheet of paper. Okay, but we're trying to move beyond. No, we're not. It, what we're trying well, to. Well, I'm. You see, I, that's Mark, interesting. Mark, you Mark, always Mark. say we aren't, but I'm. I, no, I, Mark, I think Mark, Mark, please, please, please. For context, because of the demo next Tuesday, we're trying to polish what we have. You, you know, I understand that. I, I will, but then please don't be too defensive about it. I'm just trying to understand the thing. So what, what, what this is supposed to be seeing? Because I'm just seeing a static. Is so we're seeing, uh, we're basically seeing a virtualized representation of paginated. Um, sort of A4 or, or, or letter page te uh, text, is that correct? No, no, we're not. Let me just continue a little bit, Mark. And then okay. We, okay. Uh, Rob? Uh, <clears throat> I'm just wondering why you're not using the standard uh, model for manipulating objects in VR, which is the dot and bar, which allows you to uh, change the size and move it around and close it. That's only a standard for vision. It's not a standard for the quests. However, uh, I'm very happy if we want to do that underneath rather than what is currently indicated by a gray bar. 
Um, I don't think that's a bad thing at all. Is there a consensus that we should do that? White bar and an X at the bottom. It also gives us a nice way to go back because we don't really have that at the moment. Sounds okay. good. Andrew, you're making a note to consider trying to copy the vision of OS bar and dot underneath. Uh, well, we we do have an X currently in there, so you can close it. Um, that's been there for about a month. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, but yeah, I can move the the drag bar. The, the issue is, um, uh, this isn't a stopping point. I can totally do this, um, but it takes a lot of work to design something like this inside the headset, like to make it will function. Um, and I won't most likely have it working by Tuesday. Um. Okay, well, let's, the, let's... the current layout you're seeing of the document looks simple, but is a lot happening in the code to make that function. Um, and I can I can redesign it with this perspective, and that's fine. Um, but I think it'll take more than just a, a couple of days, which is all I would have for Tuesday. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. Let me just go through all of this, and then we can decide if, first of all, we don't even know if we've decided to do any of this. So we have to prioritize and potentially change. So the one thing we have agreed is the dot and the bar underneath. So, so that, that's a good one. Uh, it, that's a reasonable thing within a week or not? Uh, no, not really. It's the bar underneath that would take a lot of work um, because it has to curve to match the space. And currently the handles are, are set up for the left on the side and they expand. So they've been designed in one way. Um, so I'd have to redesign that. Um, and it has a lot of functionality in it right now. So kind of transferring all that code over and making it work down below, it's definitely possible, um, and I can do it. I just don't think I'll have it working by Tuesday because of um, the amount of hours I have left and the amount of like more pressing issues um, because there's currently some very broken stuff I've been working on with the, um, the view distance. So if we want to just scrap the view distance for now, maybe I could put that development time towards this. It just depends on prioritizing, but I was thinking of getting that fixed first. Okay, that's that's fair enough. So let, after we go through, see if there's any of this we want to do, uh, and then we prioritize. Um, one question is, I'm really happy with our cylinder environment, but would it be easier for you if the documents were rectangular flat, which I think would be useful anyway? I mean, if they're flat, it certainly makes a lot of the, the development easier. Um, but I thought the whole point of having the cylindrical stuff like that was that was part of what made our space um, our space. If if we want to go flat again, I can, of course. Well, OK, so Danny, this is also, of course, a big question for you. Uh, we have a cylindrical space and that's fantastic. It's not going to change. But for a document floating in space like this, do we want that to be rectangular or do we want it to be slightly curved as well? As in flat or curved is what I'm saying. I'm, I guess I'm trying to figure out if the space is cylindrical. The documents have been cylindrical also, Andrew, isn't that correct? Yeah. Yeah, it's got a slight curve. If I turn off the curve, it becomes... Um, a lot more obvious how it kind of doesn't really move correctly as, as we expect. Um, but you yeah, know, we could, yeah, we I could do we that. Made it all cylindrical. So it's been that way for quite a while. No, yeah, absolutely. And I have absolutely nothing against it. Um, and of course, if we decide to make it flat, then we would probably use this vertical midpoint, uh, how we orient it in space, because even in a, cylindrical physical room, we can still have flat paper, right? Um, and I'm only bringing this up, Andrew, because you were talking about the complexity of it. But if you think it makes more sense to continue with that, I have absolutely no issue with that. And I'm yeah, also I mean, it would be good to avoid redesigning it. Like if I make a mock up that's flat for Tuesday, and then I have to redesign it again and make it cylindrical. Um, Seems okay. like a lot of wasted time, but I suppose for a demo, it might be worth it. Let, let me just say that it would be really great to leave that part of the project as it is. The cylindrical is working fine. And if we want to show some bells and whistles, you know, I mean, Andrew needs to work on the distance thing. I think that's important. 
and that's probably more important than, I mean, I don't want to take us off track. No, no, For... this, what I'm presenting here is not, uh, Andrew, I think, take your developer's head away from for the next few minutes, because if we decide we want to do any of these, then of course we need to look at what effort would be involved. Uh, so don't, don't worry that this is now, you know, a, a given. So let, I'll just walk you through in, in total. So the first thing is um, indicated lower right is a dot. That is supposed to mimic the uh, Vision OS Kirby bit, which is really hard to use. You currently have functionality, Andrew, that's brilliant on how to resize the paper, so to speak, to any size you want. The notion here is that just to put that in one spot. So if you pull the lower right hand corner, you can reshape the document. The eye on the lower left is where you get information about the document, including your own annotations, whether you like this document or not. The view is what you already have, but it's currently indicated here just with one word. So here's the thing. Here are the explanations and a bit further on it. If uh, it would be nice, instead of having the scroll bar, if we had a very nice gesture for how to smoothly scroll up and down and how to get to the next heading. Getting to the next heading, I think, is really, really key to snap, you know, snap through the document. Andrew. Um, I was actually planning on adding, wasn't going to replace the scroll bar. We totally can. Uh, I was going to add another where you can just drag the background kind of like um, you would on a phone to scroll it that way as well. Um, because I realized that was kind of a, a gesture people were trying to do. Um, and I was like, oh, yeah, that would that should be there. So that was that was one thing we were going to add, and it could replace the scroll bar entirely, um, if that would be more elegant. Right, yeah, because the, the idea here is to put little things on the paper uh, that people can click on for actions, but we also have gestures for those actions. So it's the same logic as a control click menu and keyboard shortcuts. So the views, you know, you click and you get options and we need to discuss obviously what options, but you should also have a gesture for that. Maybe, you know, something like this or something. Mark. Um, yeah, just passing in, uh, noting in passing, um, and not as a sort of, uh, as a fixed view on, on uh, scroll bars. One useful thing when you're, when you're working within the limits of pagination is scroll bars are really useful to show where you are in the document because the document is going to be n pages long. So one of the things that, that I know has been, was got sort of relearned, I think, in the early days of iOS was, no, you do actually sort of need them, not for scrolling, because partly they show you, yeah, I mean, and I know in the early Mac, it was even more, it used to show you how big the document was because the scroll bar itself used to vary in size depending on the document. So um, I think there's some useful things to uh, take from the old things, not copy slavishly, but I think, um, there are probably some hints. I'm not suggesting do it now because we're trying to do this demo, but I'm really just putting the sort of thought on the record that scroll yeah. bars or, or some of the information they, they present would be useful. Yeah, so the, the notion here is that since it's the table of contents is always visible above or below, depending on what you're reading, you get quite a bit of context for where you are on the document based on that. Um, that doesn't, I, I'm not sure it gives you quite the context i'm talking about because if you, if you don't know how you don't know how long each section is so you don't really know where you are in the document you kind of do because if you're reading a book your argument is 100 percent, no question but if you're reading a paper that sections don't tend to be that super long right so this is optimized for paper reading not i don't paper. think that holds i mean from all the papers i've seen i don't think you can make that generalization but if you click on one of the headings here Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when you get the text, you know, maybe it goes off the bottom of the screen a little bit or or something. You still want to know how long that one section is? Well, sorry, I'm not making, I, I was trying to make a, a general observation because I think I know, I'm conscious we're trying to fix this thing now. What I'm saying is d don't let's lose sight of the fact that it's useful to know how long the document is and, and where you are on it. And I take yeah. a what thing you say about headings, but I still think it's a sort of tangential point to that. I agree we shouldn't throw the baby out with the bathwater, but I also think it's really important we focus on the type of text that will be read here, which is academic papers, which, at least in our field, each section isn't super long. So well, the papers aren't super long. What, what I'm saying is, 
I, let me restate what I meant is I don't think you can just make the bald assertion that all no, the, I, the, I the agree, sections but... are equal length. The, 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 the length of the sections are controlled by the length of the paper and some papers are short, some papers are longer. So um, it, it gives you it gives you some idea how many sections you are through the paper. It doesn't really tell you how far you've got to go or how far you've come. Okay, well, so that's that's up for discussion. So, um, okay, why don't you do a mock-up of that, Mark, of how you would like to have the se sections indicated? So we well, can. Did, uh, I, should we do that later? Because in a sense, if we're not no, going to no, not the second. Yeah. Now. Okay. Fine. Because, Nancy, question. Yeah. Nancy, a quick question. So this looks great. I mean, this is what we're trying to be doing, right? We're trying to show how to read in virtual space, right? This is a big jump into what we're talking about. My question for Andrew is how much of this is already done and in place, and how much do you have to build out before Tuesday of this? Uh, um, the way it's looking, I'd have to build out almost all of this yeah. because I don't really have any of it, um, at least not in this this design. Um, which you know that's that's fine. I just I don't think I can have it Tuesday. Can you tell uh, us could, what, what you could have, like which points would be the easiest to have by Tuesday? So then he can say, um, and coming up, are these other yeah, elements? Mainly it's the, the big layout changes that are going to take a lot of work. Um, and if I'm understanding correctly, the, the gray text are headers now, right? Um, and they're always there. So you're only scrolling the black bit, uh, which is fine. But also like the rescaling, uh, resizing the window with just the dot. Um, I currently don't have anything that lets me rescale stuff horizontally. Um, so for the, and that will, that will take a lot of work to get working. I, I do think we should have it at some point, though. Yeah, I think this is a great idea. Um, I'm just wondering if we can, we're not going to be able to do this by Tuesday. No, is, no. This where we're headed, though? is this where we're headed by December, though? I'm not. Yeah, good question, Dini. Um, I think we need to dream together more. This is a provocation for us to discuss, obviously. Um, and um, yeah, look, I've been looking at the current work. So, did, okay, so this, hang on. You're, you're blocking. I'm, I'm just going to try to put together some of the things we have um, agreed on here that we should have at some point. Uh, let me just do this. Could put this on the side. Right. So the first thing, um, yeah, let, let's talk about September with the view that uh, maybe something can be done by Tuesday. How's that? September, November, and December. So I guess what I'm going to, let me say this, Mark, and then I'll turn it over to you. If this is what we're making by December, if this is what we're going to show Sloan we've done, which is great, right? I agree with what you're showing here. This looks good. If this is where we're headed ultimately, then now we can step back. Andrew can then say, by this date, I can have this function. By this date, we can have this function. And map it out so that by December, the whole thing is done. What I, what I want to avoid are two things. First, we keep changing the interface and he keeps having to throw out designs and he's going to shake his head yes and smile at me. And second, that we go this direction and make major changes again, because by December, we want to show that we're reading in virtual space. And I love this design photo. Terrific. So can we all agree that we can look at this and start to map out step by step what's next, knowing that by Tuesday, this whole thing is not going to be available. If that's the case, then what... What aspect of it do you want, and what aspect, Andrew, can you produce? Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah, yeah. And I look forward to Mark's comments on that first. Uh, it's a very quick one, but it's actually perhaps pertinent to this because, uh, again, it was an accidental thing I discovered from messing around with the ACM hypertext thing is that when I embiggen the text to get it to a sort of really comfortable reading size, to my surprise, what actually happened is the width of the document increased, not the size of the text. And, and Fred did this useful little sort of um, just quick poll of people of, you know, what, what's, a, what's a comfortable reading width? And so I think a lesson from that is we need to ensure that if we want to make it bigger so we can see it more easily, we don't want to make it wider because that doesn't make it easier to read. 
So the two things need to move independent. I mean, it's blindingly obvious, perhaps after the fact, but it, I, it surprised me when I tripped over that. Um, and I only mention that because, of course, it may have it may have some bearing on what we we cannot can't do in the design. And one other quick thing that now it's fully sunk in that um, what I'm looking at effectively is an accordion view. It's just it's not obvious. So one of the things that sort of lesson to note is very early on in the presentation we need to give people a metaphor that they understand that isn't this. So they understand that what they're looking at is something they're used to seeing because this will be new to them. So the, 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 the text above and below will, will not be obvious to them necessarily. And we, or we, or we shouldn't assume it will be obvious to them that, that, that those are headings above and below. So as long as we explain that we're looking like a, like a sort of moving fisheye view or an accordion or whatever, I think it'll make sense as long as we give them that little prompt to put them in the right mental space when they see the thing presented. Thanks. Yeah, th thank you. That is very important. Um, Andrew, fire away. And so I, I guess I kind of have two little things. Um, one is uh, for the, the scaling dot, which I think is what you're working on right there, actually. Um, yeah. Why are we putting it on the bottom? Why not the, the top? Because it would make sense if we have, have the an bottom as like an, an anchor. I have an answer to that. Mm -hmm. I have an absolute horror of putting stuff that isn't information high up. For me, and this is very personal, so this is really nice to hear what you guys think. For me, tools should be lower down where my hands are. Information should be higher up where my eyes are. If that's just me being weird, very happy to change that. Um, but that, it, I don't know, it's just like a massive hang up with me. Okay, so it's just going to anchor at the top when you when you scale it up and down. Well, the, the thing that Mark said now is brilliant because it saves us a lot of work, potentially. I do agree that it's really important to be able to, to scale the document up and down. I do this a lot with author when I write an XR. Sometimes I want a massive, tall thing so I can see a lot of stuff. Although, you know, that's important to go wide or not not as important we have done research basic and we've done some research on that if the wide isn't important let's just not add it because that is a significant hurdle with development let's just not add it uh yeah and you know for now just putting in an icon like this and uh, also uh, yeah, sorry well, very quick thought uh i'm back this thing about above and below i mean i've not really thought of much before but it does seem in uh if we're going to use hands as well i mean, I mean, some people would be using eye, but if you're using your hands, having to reach up to the top of something is sort of more of an effort than probably doing something low down. So separately, I mean, it's like it's like a sort of convergent thing to to Fred's you know description of his 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 sort of preference for tools. But there is some there is some sense in it. Although I know we've been educated over decades to have you know the button controls, and we know that if we're using one one manufacturer systems, they're in that corner and they're in another. But interestingly, actually, um, as our hands will tend to be lower down, I think it, it, it might actually prove useful for that. And then, <laughs> which takes into phrase other concern anyway, but as it goes, Dini. As a five foot person, <laughs> up and down don't work for me at all. Side to side is better for me. So if I have to reach up, it's just, it's awful. So, I mean, I can reach, I, I can stand and reach down. My down is already down. <laughs> but my up is nowhere near up. And I'll just give it a little example. Years ago, when I was working with Steve Gibson in the virtual space that we were building, he's six foot two and he was building a lot of the high pitch sounds up high. I would have to leap up to touch them with my, with my tracker. So um, he had to reformat the room for somebody much t shorter than he was, because it didn't occur to him that a five foot person couldn't stretch up that high. I have little short arms anyway. So I just, I don't think an up and down at all. It just never yeah. worked for me. Yeah, no, I, I so agree, Danny. Um, yeah, uh, Andrew. Yeah, so th this is the, the second thing I had really quick. Um, and it, it's a little bit backwards in, in topic now. Um, but we have, I'm not sure if the group as a whole been paying attention um, or not, but uh, we have a, a lot of things that are half-baked and half-finished in the project, um, because every time 
um, I introduce like, okay, hey, I got this thing working as a prototype. Let's test it. And we all test it and everyone gets excited and then they put me on a new thing. So none of the prototypes are done. So like the document, it doesn't have all the settings working. Um, the, the map view doesn't have all the functionality. The, the sort of finger menu um, doesn't have all of the stuff working and I'm constantly going to a new project. Um, and that is great for testing. And I'm all for that if that's what the group wants. But now that we're starting to talk about, oh, hey, we need to have a polished demo. And suddenly, oh, it needs to be done early next week. No, um, no, 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 no. It doesn't I just, need I, to I be done. No, no, no. Andrew, it doesn't need mm -hmm. to be done early next week. No, 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 no. Uh, right. Everything you said is really, really important. We are listening to you. And I'll say it back so you know I understood. We have been doing a lot of experimenting, which is what this is. We also want something polished for when we show it in September and November. Absolutely. Uh, what I'm talking about now is we've done a lot of deep thinking. So this session today, the, the aim really is to just look at what we have and see, based on this, what we want for September. Now, at the end of the discussion, we should look at what we've agreed we want, and then we look at what you can actually deliver. Please, please don't think that we're as mad as that, because I know that generally I am, but because, and, and I have to honestly say, Dini has been very good at keeping this on track. So I'm really inspired by that. So this is right now dreaming towards the end of this conversation, what's happening on Tuesday. Okay. Very simple. Um, even like putting Tuesday aside, like it is more fun making new features than polishing ones that are there. So like, I, I totally get it, but if we want to have something in the end, we do have to keep in mind how much of a backlog we have yeah. of stuff that needs to be working. Um, now that we have a document redesign, that's actually um, in a way it's good that I didn't finish the old document because we're changing it anyways. Uh, so that actually worked in our favor. Yeah. Good. Uh, Mark. A very brief observation, uh, sort of, uh, sort of again, just puts on the record. Uh, following up on what Dini said, is that so? It seems to me one thing we want to perhaps also note in our sort of user environment is actually the sort of, in a sense, the height and possibly one or two other similar sorts of things that we essentially take for granted, because there's no reason why the environment, because you know we dictate what it is, can't scale essentially to fit the reach of the person. You know, things that we don't have to think about until somebody says, but wait a minute, I, you know, if it, if it scale one to one for a seven foot person, it's going to be awful for a five foot person. Um, but if our environment basically it can be configured to put that in, that might be part of your, your basic personalization of your equipment. I know it's different if you're passing stuff around, but I imagine at this stage of the game, apart from demos, most people probably will be using their own equipment and therefore have the potential of having their private settings. I'm not suggesting we try and do that now. Again, I'm just putting something ready for the record. Dini. Mark, I think the other thing that we keep taking for granted is a, is a profile view of the paper of eight and a half by 11 format, which is not necessarily needing, needed in a virtual environment. Landscape works better because we're using landscape mode on our laptops and computers anyway, right? So the document looks like eight and a half by 11 on a landscape shape, which is goofy as hell. Well, so, sorry, sorry. Yeah, so so yeah, so I would I would prefer to, to go landscape with the image and I would prefer nothing looking like a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. So um, if I had my druthers, if I had a choice, I would knock out the square entirely and have the words just on the background. So I'd go opaque or completely, um, what's the word, um, transparent. Maybe any we could do that. Maybe we can have both because at this point, we've removed the border and we put all of the UI down at the bottom. Um, there's no reason to have the white background except for those who feel comfortable with it. Um, mm -hmm. So give it an option, just toggle the backgrounds on and off. We, it can yeah. put it in the, the hand menu, like turn all backgrounds off or, well, or something like that. Well, that'll, that'll impact on whether we have more than one document in the reading space. Because overlaid text, overlaid other text, really quickly becomes messy. What we currently have is the kind of map view that we still call it, even though it isn't, that's still there. So if we're going to make it easy to read, we need some sort of a frame. 
But Danny, so this was the, um, the, the, the column thing that Mark was talking about. Uh, mm -hmm. We're testing just, you know, um, this is what people like, came up with. It, it is a very natural thing because the, uh, I agree with you, the general use of, of, uh, of wide space because, um, hang on, I, I got the results up here. Um, but the thing that you've so strongly contributed to this is to be able to tear off things and put it in different spots. So to me, that seems very natural to use the width. You tear off and put it here. You don't tear off and put it above or below. But for the actual reading, so, so this is what we got here. So number three, which is the middle kind of column, that got eight. And the next ones were two or, th two or four, which each got four. So there is a strong preference for not a newspaper column. That's a bit too much but for something. And instead of having um, Andrew redo the ability to change, of course, we have to decide what we think should be the optimal size. You know, you can easily do a preset size, right, Andrew? For, for the, uh, as long as we keep yeah, up, I, up and down scaling, right? So just to explain how it works, I currently have a variable that you set for the width when it generates the document. Um, yeah. I can set that to whatever I want. The problem is um, because of the way the Troika text generates, uh, it doesn't really know where it is, so I have to tell it specifically. So to build everything out vertically, I need to know exactly how tall each text block is. So it generates like that, which so we have a loading bar now. Um, rescaling that breaks all of the the distance because it doesn't know where it should be anymore. So as long as I generate it with a set width, it can be whatever we want. Changing okay. it on the fly is super hard. Right. right. Can I mention the people that you tested here are not academics? Some of them are. Um, How many of them are? Mark, uh, Keith, uh, uh, I would say, well, Kevin's a designer, student, academic, so about half of them. But, you know, we, we, do, we, we do think that, uh, I, I do think we all agree this is a lot better. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so another thing that comes into it, as Mark was the one to highlight when we did this test, is... I didn't account for the size of the text. That wasn't part of that. So uh, wh whatever we're talking about here, um, what we have here is just a screenshot from author. You know, this is a rough mock-up. We do need to experiment with the size of the font, the line spacing, the width, all of these things are absolutely not finalized. Though I have to say what Andrew currently has is pretty darn close. So we don't have to go all over the place. Yeah. I think a thing to sort of avoid in looking at this is to ask people which they prefer in the sense that because we're, we're, we're in a different place, you know, we're not in Kansas anymore. So the things that you've learned to expect from print are not necessarily working in your favor now because we're doing things that print could never do. So I, th I one of the things I've noticed is lots of systems will allow you to change change the font but what's comfortable for reading isn't necessarily good for writing and vice versa so you tend to put it on an all-purpose thing and leave it and never set it again whereas in this sense i think we can we can sort of be more flexible because we're definitely at the, this point not talking about about writing um and so having something that is comfortable to read which i think the thing i've taken from current web design is a bit more white space between the lines larger font just i can just read a lot faster and you scroll it by yeah. Um, and you know, and, and that doesn't stop me having a TOC. It doesn't stop us having this accordion-like uh, display. But in other words, the width isn't a choice between paper or sideways paper. It's whatever is comfortable. Um, and I think the difficult thing is to get to ask people that question without without sort of raising the curtains so they see what we're trying to do. But otherwise, I suggest what what people will interpret that as being is that they'll you know they'll go back to is it, is it this or that. Which, which is what I think we're trying to break, break away from. Okay, so I'm glad we agreed. We're going to be using square reading spaces. So it's Instagram and not A4. Just kidding. Um, yeah. Oh, very quickly, sorry, before I forget. Um, the other thing is you mentioned backgrounds and things. Is um, Could we consider it in the sense of having an opacity? If the, if the, the text area, I, I'm going to call it a window as shorthand, and I know <laughs> we're trying to get away from that. But if the text object I'm displaying, basically it has an opacity which we can alter. So if we want more or less contrast, um, because that also then helps us when we consider yeah. this point of overlap. Okay. Yep. I, 
Okay, when it comes to that, I am very, very firmly in the camp that when you're reading something, you don't want to be reading on uh, baking paper or plastic. You want to read on a solid, non-opaque substrate. I mean, completely opaque. Uh, however, and I have a feeling Andrew's going to say exactly the same thing, when you have more than one document open and you put one to the side, it's not in your focus, there's no reason the background couldn't go away then. So you can still glance, see what it is, and pull it forth to read it. But your main reading focus, I will fight with my teeth on that one. Uh, Andrew. This is actually fun because yesterday um, I was testing some stuff out and I, I tried making it so that when you are uh, like dragging an object around, because I'm doing some overhauls to the, the dragging system, um, when you're doing that, everything else in the background fades to half transparency so you can really focus on what you're moving. And visually, it looks really good. And I was I was very happy. Um, and then I ran into some problems with testing. And it's because the way 3JS renders transparency is, uh, yeah, iffy. So that means that um, while it looks great for a moment, as soon as you move your head slightly, all the transparency is gone um, because it doesn't quite know how to do render order. Um, and Part of it is also the way that we have this system set up because of how everything moves. Um, it doesn't have like a distinct depth from the camera. Uh, so the transparency just freaks out. Um, so I, I very sadly had to remove it, um, at least for now, until I can find some solution. Uh, that being said, uh, half transparency is unreliable and kind of sucks. Um, we can have it full or gone. That's what I've found so far. So I, I think... That's really, really good. That's the kind of research notes we want. So I, I think then maybe what we do, and Dini, this is a really a question for you. When you're looking at a paper reading it, you got yourself a background. But all the other papers that are open, that are off to the side, they have no background. It's only the text. That makes sense, right? Okay. Uh, Andrew, does that full transparency in the background help? Oh, yeah, I can I can totally do that. Um, what I wanted to clarify was this part that's specifically breaking is the Troika text because uh, a text isn't something that you can render regularly in 3JS. So Troika is actually like uh, it's a it's a trick with shaders. Um, so it's using like um, shader bounds and glyphs, um, and because of that, it counts as a semi-transparent object, and that's why transparency breaks with it. Um, wow. You can do semi-transparency on some other stuff. That's really interesting and cool. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to back up Mark's point that we all agree with. I just wanted to show you these slides here. If you have a look, please. This was an earlier color test where I asked people what colors they like. And um, what was interesting, they, this was on the whole point of saying people have individual preferences. Uh, but what is weird is so many people, especially professional authors that I know, they want black text, white background, don't argue with me. But what I found when writing an author in the vision is that actually you don't want that because it's quite strong, because it's everywhere, you want it slightly, slightly gray. So the fact that it's viewed in a headset rather than here makes it different. And, and that's all just to, yes. Design, good design shows that we never use pure white or pure black. So when Holly designs anything in the, in the lab, it's a little off white and a little off black. And we teach that in our courses. Our students are not allowed to use black and white. So zero, 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 and F, 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 F are not allowed. <laughs> it's gotta yeah. be some, some facsimile of it because the eye can't handle that contrast well. Yeah, no, that, that makes a lot of sense. So um, on this now, so what we got here is um, just having fun. On our scaling thing, I've just decided that maybe this we have a bar on top of the bar, which is our control bar, right? So that's where we have the views. Maybe we write them out, maybe we have, you know, whatever. But on the right, we have this grab handle. So it's like a one hamburger thing, just to indicate this goes up and down. And just to placate Mark, because he may actually have a point, that maybe we keep, Andrew, the, um, the scroller, but make it quite small, and maybe even make it look like it's a cut into the paper. Mm, I like that. Maybe make it so you can't grab it anymore because at that point it's so small it'd be frustrating anyways. Or or yeah. maybe keep it as a secret feature. Yeah, exactly. And then uh, maybe uh, we have, to, uh, this hasn't really been thought out, but maybe in the lower left-hand corner we have a different icon. Uh, and this is definitely not for Tuesday. 
um, when you click on this, it flips the document around so you get the back of it, and that's where you have all the metadata, your own annotation and all of that stuff, right? This is something I've tried to do in author for years. Uh, in fact, I have it here for, um, for Liquid. So if you do this to go in and out of the preferences, I know it's a bit slow on here, but you know, it, it's quite fun and also a bit ugly. But it, anyway, just to have a information bit available, but if we go to the other slide, um, why do I do that? Oh, yes. If we go back here. So uh, one thing I need to know from you guys so far, when you're in Andrew's environment, how far do you currently want to have your reading stuff? Is it beyond hands reach? For me, it's actually okay if it's at the boundary of hands reach. So we could actually allow the user to select text if your eyes are the same as mine. Oh, Danny, you're muted. Asking about, do we want stuff all around us or do you want to pay something on the screen for the text itself? I'm not clear what you're asking. Uh, what I'm saying is that, um, one second. So when you're in, my traditional author, very flat. Um, obviously, we have the trackpad or mouse you select to get a menu, which is really fast and easy. Of course, we don't have that here. So in um, Andrew's environment currently, it's based on um, the laser beam, right? But what I'm saying is that it's for me, maybe it's my eyes at the moment, maybe I need a new prescription. Um, I don't mind actually reading close enough that if I stretch my hand out, I can actually touch the documents. And if so, selection becomes something quite different. So that is all with the question of when you have selected text, how do we get options for what to do with it? Mark set his hands up. Just quickly, I, in terms of so touchable, it seems to me that, well, it's that normal thing you go to the opticians and they say, well, where do you hold the book? And that's probably your text handling distance. Yes. Um, so, that's probably where it's, I imagine, natural for most people. So if we're not doing it at that sort of um, perceived distance inside the environment, that's when we, we may want to think of um, other things where you either have to bring something in into that handling distance or you have to have some other affordance that, that sort of puts you into a control, control method. But I don't have a fixed view on that. It's just an observation. But how um, does it feel for you guys so far? When you when you test, what, shall we do it now? Actually, I, uh, no, I can't. Hey, okay, so you know what, Frodo? What I really like about the Vision Pro and about the MetaQuest is that I can actually touch the screen. I mean, I can touch it, right? And I feel like I'm using my hands. I don't need a controller with the Apple Vision Pro. I can just use my hands and touch things. Right. I don't. And according to design principles that that video you know, lays out is we don't want to use trackers if we didn't have to. We want to be able to use our hands as much as possible. So if we can do that, that's great. And I can, that means I can have my text arms length, but my arms are shorter than yours. So my arms length, <laughs> it's probably half of your arms length. Exactly. Uh, you can see my view now, right? Yes, I can see. So, Ta da I'm in Wonder World. Okay, so it's just crazy how sharp it is now. So here we are moving things around. It's all very brilliant. I know I touch and hold this to get back to this. I want to read this paper. It opens. Right. So here's the thing. Now it's beyond my reach and it's good. But if I now move myself closer to it so that I can touch it, I still find it readable. I'm not saying necessarily it should be like that, but that is my question. How do you all feel about that? Compared to your maximum hand, where do you want it? Well, well, one other consideration, again, because we're in a, an environment we construct and we're not working off a, we're not reading something that's effectively a physical con construct that can't be altered, is that if you want to read it further away, you just make the text bigger. No, um, there is. Yes, stereo, no, no, absolutely. No, no, that, Mark, there is a stereo vision issue as well um, that I found when you, because like looking at our hand, right, it's really yeah. crisp and clear. However, your 
eyes are focusing closer together. You're sorry, not focusing, but they are converging, right? So it, I don't think it's, excuse me, in that sense, there isn't just a plane. So no, what I mean is that, that I, I don't mean on an infinite plane, but as if you have something that's, say, at two times your arm distance, actually just maybe maybe double the size, most people, so those who don't need severe correction, I would imagine being able to read that comfortably. So this goes back to this, goes back to this, this sort of thing about it's, it's not so much about the, the width. Um, it's, it's, you know, having the thing at a comfortable size. And I mean, this is why when I read PDFs now, I just read them at about 30 points on a 24 inch screen. And it's just so much easier. Uh, no, I, I, just, I understand that. I think we're on the same, but I really, I need to know guys, when you are reading in Andrew's environment now, do you want it to be so close that you can touch it? Or is that your Yes. Point? Yes, I want to touch it. Okay, so we, uh, we want to have the, the basic read difference that will be um, focused, right? Okay, that, that's that. Another, yeah. another factor of it being close up is that one of the things that we're not doing yet, but which will sort of come is we'll be thinking about, you know, annotations and interactions with it. And obviously, if it's, if you're just reading a great wall of text at distance, and that's, that's all you want to do, then actually having it in your sort of manipulation distance, uh, again, makes sense. Yeah, no, absolutely. So, um, yes, that, that's, that's pretty much the point. So, um, Okay. So, First, yeah, Dini, please. So does that answer your questions? It answers my question that for now, at least, we want the reading different distance to be within hand's reach. So we will experiment with that. Um, and if we feel that it gives us eye strain, we change it. But at least it's something to try. Is, is that cool, um, Andrew? Yeah, and it's it actually ties in really well with what I'm currently trying to do, um, because with the the grab, so we can change the distance. Um, my goal is to have it completely um, freeform, so it still generates at a certain snap distance. But once you grab it, you can put it wherever you want, and it's just fully free moving forward and back. Um, so you can just pick a spot you like and set it there. Um, and we could we could decide if perhaps once you set it at a spot that becomes the new default for new documents that could be interesting. That's yeah, that's good because the one of the things I like the most about the quest is um, when you're in the desktop control panels, you can actually move them like this. You grab and move; it's not floating away. Okay, good. We have agreement on on that. Um, so then. Um, one other really nice thing, because uh, you mentioned the quest that I, I really like in it, is that basically it has oh, it's like this sort of focus aura on it. So you go to some of these things, and, ah, you can grab it by the edge and move it. And that's, I think, another interesting thing for us to borrow on in the sense that as we move away from the need to have sort of hard edges to things, so there's like a manipulation space around it. Um, again, something as we go forward, not, not, not for the sort of next Tuesday. Yeah, sorry, I'm just looking at the text messages. There is, is a lot. Um, good. Okay, uh, up to date. Right. So, um, yeah, first thing we need to agree on, at least agree on or agree to discuss later, that is what do you feel like this whole accordion effect would be like in terms of use? Uh, I'm asking first you, Dini, do you have a feeling of you have a table of contents, you tap on something, it opens, but everything else stays? Um, so that's one way of moving around the document. Does that sound good or not? Yeah, it's a way to condense space and expand. Yeah, that then the using that in hypertext all the time. I mean, hypertext art. I mean, that's a traditional way yeah. of doing hypertext art. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This is not a. Text. It's not a new invention, but the reason I like this approach is for me. I like the notion of the text being a single sculpture. I really do not like the idea of having table of content off, off to the side. It's like a remote control that is snapped off. So, okay, so we- Can I ask a question to Andrew though? Andrew, is this possible? Is this gonna be like a nightmare? <laughs> a yeah, what, nightmare? I, what I wanted to clarify, you've got the table of contents. Um, it appears to me at both the top and the bottom, right? Oh, oh yes, and you know why, right? 
It's because the current one is Open. showing the current text. But the, the question I have then is, what do you have happen when you scroll? I really, that's very up for discussion. I, I, really I feel like this is something kind of fancy, right? Because you want it to like scroll up into itself and then the next header comes up, right? So the way this is like this, there's been different versions in the hypertext world. This is actually, um, okay, um, a, a little bit of a context from my side. When I, other people have invented it too, obviously, but when I invented this in the 90s, it was based on a military radar. Because when you are watching the radar in a fighter plane, things that are out of your current zoom range are stuck at the top of the screen. So you can see there are three fighters somewhere off at your 11 o'clock, but you can't see them because you're zoomed in. Really, really important. That's how I came about doing this one the first time. Bruce Horn, uh, he invented this and called it Sticky Paths. He, all, he, all, he has a, um, a patent on this that is licensed to Apple. So when you're in the finder and you open something and you scroll, the folders will always stay at the top of the screen so you can see how deep you're on the folders. So there's a, a wide range of people who come up with this kind of an approach. And the question of where you can see here in closing, done, all of that stuff, um, should that go off the page if this section is too big? I think it should. I think you need to scroll down and get to the bottom of the text. I don't think it should act like a separate bar. Okay, that's so you great. don't mind if the bottom doesn't stick, you just want the top sticking. Is that my understanding? Yes. And that so as you go down, you'll slowly lose space to read, but that's acceptable? You highlighted a big issue, because if, if there's a lot of um, table of con a lot of headings, that's going to get quite bad. Uh, thank you. For I was going to bring up okay. in the for testing, everything. when I had the outline view working, um, testing the you know, Hypertext 22 papers, there are a couple that have just a ton of headers yeah. and it fills almost the whole view space that I had, which means we're going to have to make these by default very tall to account for that. That's a real issue. So we might just do level one headers. We might do this. We might do that. I don't know. Mark, you have an idea on this. I'm pretty um, sure. I think it's something I have to play with. Um, I mean, one of the things might be to do that, obviously, for the section you're in, you might need the whole the whole route to the current top level section, which might be two or three, which you normally don't nest more than about three. So in other words, you, you could see a number of uh, top level headings and then the, the current top level you're in, and there may be two breakdowns within that. Um, I, I'm i thinking that, I, I mean, one of the things I've put my hand up say is don't let's, don't let us call this a table of contents because I think that, that, that will, will sort of, pollute the, the discussion, especially for people who've thought less about this. Um, it's got things that you find in a table of contents. But if this is mainly about you finding where you are in the in the document, for instance, if, you, if you're reading and you find that, say, a heading at the top has scrolled off the top, well, you know it's somewhere up, up, up from where you are. The fact that you can't necessarily click on it, unless we're assuming that if you click on any of those headings, that's a jump to that section. But even so... I, I think it's something to experiment with because it's probably the, this one of these sort of things where that as you approach a boundary, um, you want to start feeding stuff in. And my my understanding, and I've only been at arm's length in this sort of stuff, is that kind of thing just takes a lot of iterative testing. So I don't think we should try and do it now because it takes a lot to get right. And you know, it's sort of that's the kind of thing that I think we can think that we might want, but I don't think we need to do now. So. It may just be that we we either have to have all the level one headings, or we we um, show at least the last four above where we are, because obviously by scrolling up you'll eventually get to the top, and you could have a gesture or a command that's going to leap you to to front or end. But I think for now, if the, I think the, the the metaphor that makes immediate sense is a sort of accordion view. It's like a, a rolling fish eye, except the fish eye isn't sort of all bent out of shape that basically you're seeing the middle bit of text is in readable form but it's like a it's it's like a sort of scrolling magnifying glass moving across the longer piece and you're seeing part of above and below a part of the structure um i think the toc is something we need to preserve it's useful but it's probably something you might want to literally open as an adjunct when you need it some people may never need it those who um 
need for whatever purpose, um, you know, we we can deal with it as, as sort of like a separate display element. But I like this idea. Um, and, but I, I, I think for this stage, we probably don't want to overburden ourselves with the fine tweaking of what happens. I think most people would be happy if you said we're doing that and we're considering how much is shown. But I think it's a lot of engineering work for not much immediate gain at this point until we've when we built the basics then we can fine tune the degree to which the bottom top bottom change i don't know if that makes sense so let's think about and thank you mark um let's think about dini's continued insistence in the best way possible uh, of this being spatial and not being locked into rectangles so let's think about maybe uh, there is some act of twisting the page paper a little bit in order to see more of the table of contents. Uh, so I'm just indicating here in a very useless way, just to give a sense of dimension to it. So maybe um, you know, because we, the thing is, we haven't really started. Yeah, Dini, please. If you look at some of the VR art, I've been going through looking for VR art to show in my class. And all the via the VR art that I'm looking at, Canticle being one of them by Samantha Gorman. Um, another one screened by Noah Waltrip Fruin. The text is not straight. There are different shapes around. They're twisted, they're sideways. And that's the way the virtual spaces have been, virtual text has been presented for over 20 years, right? And so what you're suggesting, Froda, is good. It's something that's there. It's already exists in the world that we can play with in an academic space and move it from art into academics. Right. Yeah. So if we have a thing in front of us and we now want to look at it in context what are the fun things we can do one things we could is touch the heading here and say show me more headings we could yeah so rob what are the most sci-fi ideas we have available for how to go next i'm afraid i'm wondering why some of this um my eyes are different um for instance uh they're they're out of register looking up so as i have to tilt my head if i'm trying to get to that dim little thing in the top of the vr um <clears throat> experience and um, t twisting and, and morphing text around just makes it harder for me to read. Can I show an example of what I'm talking about? Can I show you Canticle? Yeah, let me give you screen sharing. Let me pull it up. Yeah, Rob, that is definitely not our aim to make it harder for you. So that's a very strong comment. That would kind of defeat the purpose of this. This is by Samantha Gorman. Been around for quite a while. And this is the video documentation of the performance. I'm not going to show you all of it. I'll just let it play for a little bit and then move it and scroll. There's beautiful music with this. I did not show the same. Dina, you're running out of power on your laptop. Yeah, well, it's not plugged in. Sorry. As long as you're okay. Oh. Um, did we? Yeah, we lost Dina just as that happened. Um, that was really worthwhile. I hope we can see more. Um, just wanted to show you this. Uh, 
you know, we are against pagination. Of course we are. Um, one thing that has changed my mind a little bit, Mark, is um, when you do spacebar in Safari now, it properly goes down a page. It doesn't lose a line, which it did for a long time. So uh, this is um, that's not what I meant to show you. Uh, for a point of yeah, so we we looked at this recently, and there's nothing inherently wrong with this, but it's also not very useful necessarily. But if we imagine this kind of a layout, but displayed in this kind of a way, so what you see on the side is just indication from what's what's coming and what's going. You know, we may start playing with it with the notions of more three-dimensional text, but the key text you're reading will always be front and center. An interesting thing from the thing you just showed. Sorry about that. This is just for the visual migraine alone. Um, if you, um, you know, when you shared the document there, sort of split out into sections. Again, it, this is the, the nice little thing about being able to remediate stuff because that's exactly the kind of thing you might just want to pull up. You wouldn't use it for reading, but it's it's quite a nice overview. So if it's a kind of thing that the 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 text the system is able to get from the text to show us. Like, you know, what's the shape of this? Oh, wow, you know, that section towards the end is really long. It's sort of, it's all useful. It's something that you'd have to do by sort of flicking through the pages, for instance, on a, on a paper document. But for the actual reading, um, I, I do wonder, because if you're if you're concentrating on what's coming next, you're not really looking at what's here. Um, and I, the thing I sort of noticed with the sort of, now we have these long scrolling pages in, in sort of web page terms is that, uh, often what you're doing is it, it's a bit like that sort of typewriter metaphor that what you do is you scroll so you're reading the middle of the page so you it isn't this sort of so these things like the sort of space metaphor I find myself moving away from because actually what I really do is it's almost as if you could and some people I think have sort of bits of kit that actually scroll the page for them yeah. It's a bit like watching, you know, listening to the thing at a different speed from the one it was recorded at, but you can just see the thing scroll past. Um, I'm not suggesting that automation is a thing to do, but it, it, it's 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 a sort of an ultimate part of that metaphor. Is if you're just trying to read the text, the main thing is that that the reading is not interrupted by having to fill it around with other stuff. Um, what you want to see around it, I would suspect, is both um, personal to personal taste and actually to the task at hand um, and they're all things I think we should try and uh, look at later when we've got the central text element done because otherwise what will happen is we'll get diverted off onto doing sort of stuff at the side that won't give us such an immediate return but I do I like your accordion idea um, and I know as Andrew's brought up it, it brings its own little subtleties but again I think we can do enough of the basic so if we do enough of the basic, there's not an engineering nightmare, then fine tuning the sort of the actual experience. I mean, I, I know that, that, that I remember reading about some of the things on the iOS, the, the getting the exact amount of sort of buffer when you get towards the edge is something that people obsess over. It's a bit like the color of links and things. Um, but, we, you know, that's a definite later thing. But I think the general idea holds. Um, I'm not, but I wouldn't worry too much about trying in the basic reading environment to be sort of foreshadowing what's coming because it as i say if you're not if you're not looking at what you're reading then you're doing something else yeah uh yeah, yeah i agree on that completely so and all i'm doing now is um spreading the table of content out obviously this is very hi dini are you on a different machine what did you plug in? Oh, I can't hear you. Oh, you're back. Yeah. Uh, Dini, are you ready to share again? I'll have to reset it up. Okay. Um, yeah, we were just talking briefly about um, if you aren't looking at what you're reading, then you're not reading. Mark made that point. I, I agree. Uh, but with the issue of this too much headings on top or on the bottom, uh, maybe, and this is a very crude mock-up, but maybe they are on the sides, uh, which is kind of part of what we had with this. 
uh, maybe that is really, really grayed out, so you have a feel for the other ones. Uh, just for the sake of um, knowledge, Andrew, if we were to do something like this, where your current thing is nice and big, but everything is shown as columns right and left, is that a massive undertaking or just a huge undertaking? Well, let's see. How would it function? If these are just previews and you still scroll the text, Uh, you, well, you would. the, the concern would be uh, rendering because that's a lot of blocks of text um, and each document would be a lot more resource intensive. Um, I'm trying to think perhaps we don't show the actual text really small because it's not readable um, and make it like abstracted in some way, like... Um, a very light gray box that's like the size of the text content. Uh, so you can sort of see how big it's going to be without actually, I don't know, that wouldn't really indicate text. Oh, but hang on. So that's really, really interesting. So you're saying that the biggest issue would be the resource of all the glyphs, right? Uh, that would that would be a, a big one for sure. Um, the way it functions determines whether or not this is a big undertaking or a massive one. Right. Um, if they're just kind of there and you scroll the document like normal and whenever you're on a new header, it kind of shifts, it would take a lot of work, but it would be, I would say, probably possible. If you want that text to kind of like somehow transform into the reading part, I don't know how that would work. Okay. Uh, would it also be muddy having just a ton of text sticking out from all your documents? Because suddenly you, you can't have two documents near each other because they both have a bunch of previews sticking out and overlapping. Uh, that's a very good point. It would probably only be there if you do a, um, if it's in focus. Um, it, it wouldn't be there all the time for sure. Uh, but we could also wrap it, you know, so you only see the, the next and previous. And then you would have to touch the, the heading here maybe to get access to a pop up. I mean, that's one thing I wanted to do in, in, in author for a while. You, you click on a heading and then all the headings appear. Right, like like a little bit of a shortcut, but when you read, it's you know you it's paginated in the sense of each heading, but within that, it's scrolling. Um, yeah, Mark. A couple of things. One is in terms of the so headings and stuff. I'm I'm conscious that if I'm reading something where I need to be interacting with the, uh, the as well the table of contents um, in two D apps, I just tend to do that. I I. Put on a as a sidebar. Now I'm partly saying that because that's the only thing it offers to do that. But in other words, I make sure that the the if if the structure is really that important that, it, that essentially I'm I'm hunting and pecking around the document. I'm not using internal links or anything like that. Um, then that's something that just needs to be displayed. Whether that's part of the current window and another or a sort of another window that appears alongside it is something that I would leave to the programmers because I don't know. I don't know what's sort of involved in that, but I, I I just I think that's worth bearing in mind. The other question I'll put in here, and again, this isn't a question for sort of now, but um, we haven't mentioned non non uh, textual parts of the reading, so images, well, anything that isn't text, tables, figures. Yeah, we, my we haven't even begun to talk about images yet. <laughs> Um, my, my sense is, and I'll put this in as a provocation because again, I don't think that's, I, I don't want to derail us in terms of the short term demo is, but I think it'd be very nice to see those appear contextually at the side. Um, the problem at the moment is we don't have sufficient metadata in the document to tell you where where uh, one of these side things is is pertinent. But I think that that would be a really nice thing to move towards. At the moment, um, I don't know. You could just have the text, and, and when you come to a non textual element, show it um at the side um or you, because i just wonder how it's going to render in terms of the, the reading space but just something to bear in mind and maybe one to just stay away from at the moment because there are there's plenty of stuff written that has no tables and no figures so let's not let's not give ourselves a problem too early in the in the in the piece thanks yeah mark we're starting with, with what i call bare text just very strange very straight up and down text let me go ahead. The, the frustration for me today is electricity. <laughs> it's been, oh my God. And getting dressed this morning in the dark because my bathroom has, you know, very little window space and it's dark here already. So if you ever wonder why Twilight, a series of vampires 
was shot in Forks, Washington. There's a good reason for it because when it's cloudy here, it's dark. Vampires can live outside in the daytime. <laughs> Anyways, let me go ahead and show you Canticle, and I'm going to share if I can still do that. Yeah. And I'm going to share my sound so you can hear the sound as well. Now I need to have um, a grid. Never mind. I can't do it on this computer because I don't have it set up on this computer. Um, I'm just going to drop the link into the uh, chat. Can you see anything at all? Okay, you just probably can't hear me. I've got to set the sound up again. With everything going down this morning, I have to reset everything. Okay, so here we go. Uh, Danny, could you explain how that text and the movement interacts please she's this is in a cave and brown can you hear me okay can, can you hear me okay i've got the sound turned off okay good um this has been filmed in the cave which is an, a four wall a four or six wall environment at brown university right a lot of work has come a lot of a lot of experimental vr work has come out of this as she's moving through the space, her hands are evoking, her body's evoking the text. So I don't know how this particular work has been programmed, but when Noah did screen, his hand was actually causing the text to, to change. So she's able to evoke this through her body movements. So they're programmed in, into the space. What I like about the work um, is the fact that the text is moving around her and is not static. So there's already a precedent for folks in, you know, in the world thinking about text in a less static way. I'm not suggesting we go this crazy <laughs> at all, but I am suggesting that we're not bound to how text is set in a piece of paper. What's interesting about the text, just let me stop this now. And I'll stop screen share. The way in which we envision using paper today and reading text has been bound by the print medium, right? It's required. But if you go back to orality, words bounced all around us. We're, we're covered. Our ears are covered. Our body's covered with sound. And what I'm suggesting is that we are moving back to this direction of this second orality, as I've talked about before, in which words aren't bound to a sheet of paper. And there's a whole lot of people like me out there that want to free up text so that we can experience it more, um, more viscerally. And this is a visceral experiment that she's doing. Does that make sense? There's a whole lot of these. I mean, I'm going to be showing these in my class on the second day of class. And um, I've got like six or seven things lined up for that day. But just getting our my students to start to quit thinking about the, the, the boundary of even the screen. Because she's in a room. It's I think it's six by six by six by six. And that's the space that she's got to work with. And she's moving all around it. Now, she's looking at us performing so she can be videotaped but she's not bound by by looking at looking at us she can move around that space without having to smile at us or perform in front of us does that make sense it, 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 yeah it, it makes sense but more importantly than that it's provocative and interesting and exactly the kind of thing we need to look at so thank you that is perfect and that is the exact research we need in addition to these technical things rob please I have to ask, is is the text meaningful 
in relation to her movements at all? Yes. Yes. Well, I saw can... the word cute. Yes, if you were, if you could read the text, if you were there right now, you're looking, you're looking at a video documentation of it, no, but no. in the space itself, <clears throat> you're able to read the text. Another example would be Noah, and you know Noah, um, Rob, right yeah. at Cruz Santa Cruz, his work, um, the work called Screen. I mean, that one is extremely uh, connected to the actual performance of virtual reality text. And I'll share that link in our Slack channel later today. So I have been I'm very, very grateful for the discussions today. I think we've done a lot of, it's nice that we've kind of relaxed a little bit and said, hey, we're going to go with what we have for a while and not tearing in different directions. So here's the thing that just came out of the last few minutes. In this mock-up, ignore the gray headings. It's just because I haven't been able to update. Look at the tiny thing that Mark insisted on for the best of reasons, right? Imagine that we have that in the document. And then if you point to it or touch it, it spawns the table of contents. So you can now choose to go up and down or touch the table of contents to jump but it's only there at the point of touching the where are you in the document thing. Andrew, yes. Um, I, it's, it's very elegant. Um, I worry it might be hard to find it unless they know to look for it there. Um, I wonder if we could have, and this is me just kind of spitballing ideas, but um, have it be a sort of a hover thing. So if you move the cursor from document to the right, kind of off the page, it all shows up. Um, and then, of course, if you go far enough, it'll go away again. Uh, we'd have to prevent a massive kind of hitbox um, around every document. So maybe if we go from off the document back on, it doesn't trigger. Um, and I'm pretty sure I can do that. That yep. might be, be an elegant way to pull it out because then they'll find it by accident as well. Yeah, that 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 sounds um, reasonable. I'm just going to copy this across. Uh, Edgar, we're in here. We're in our meetings. I know that my food is allowed, but this I made it. Oh, you made it. Well, come and say hi to everyone because you're interrupting our important meeting. No, it's all right. You have to. Okay. You made that. Mm -hmm. Good job, man. Sorry, we have a, a white ninja warrior today. It's you to try here. Yeah. Nini, what do you think of this menu thing? Sticky up your bed. I like the menu off the side like that. I do. It is obviously from here. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the thing that I found with, uh, thank you, Edgar. The, the thing that I found with um, playing with the menu in author was that Having the menu on the left, which is what I've always done, didn't fit me as a right-handed person. I, you know, I like to be able to reach across and then I'm on the right hand to do that. So I'm wondering if this may be an example of where when we ship in September, we might have it right, left, different. Dini, do you think you would prefer to have the menu spawn on the left? I would because I'm left-handed. <laughs> <laughs> no, exactly, but is this an example where you feel that matters? I, I would think it does it matter. Matters. Yeah, okay. And the other thing, can I mention one more thing? We read left to right, right in in America, in the in the in UK, in the West, and so I want the I want the menu to be on the left so I can function on the right. Uh, what What do you mean function on the right? For me to do anything to that text, I need the menu. I don't want the menu to be before the text so I can function with the text. What do you mean but before? The, the menu is right now on the right hand side. So for me to d manipulate that text or click on any of those links, I have to go to the right to do it. If I had it on the left, then I can just go up and down as I want and change that text. So this is what you would want then, obviously. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So for exactly the same reason. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. But I also I like want that. the. I also want profile instead of. I mean, I don't want profile. I want more of the. 
horizontal. It doesn't make sense to have profile in a horizontal space that we're in. You mean for this to be a thin column? Well, I like that single column, but what I'm saying, we're in an eight and a half by 11 environment. And we don't need that anymore. No, but that's why we definitely want to be able to change the vertical sizing. But uh, one thing it seems is that once you get over a certain amount of words in width, it becomes harder for people to read. When authoring, it's different because when authoring, you're kind of editing and you need to see a different context. But um, obviously, this is too small text. But um, OK, so it's, uh, yeah, Mark, sorry. No, I was going to say I liked it. Funny enough, I, I, my, my immediate sort of reaction um, to having it the right was, although as the other left hand representative in the room or another one, um, was that uh, actually because it wasn't at my start at the left sort of sense of parsing the text, it was uh, slightly less intrusive. But I, I don't mind. I, I actually think this is taking Denise's point about, you know, yes, I probably would be moving my left hand across to point at the right. So um, having it as a sort of part of the configuration going off, working off the dominant hand, uh, wouldn't worry me. I mean, the main thing is I like the overall idea of the interaction. You, so basically, you get this in contextually when you need it. You don't have to go somewhere and turn it on, off, off, off and on. Um, and so I, I think that's a really, I think that's that that would be quite an in sorry an elegant thing certainly to try. And obviously, we'll find out when we actually use it if it if it if it comes up to comes up to our sense of reality. I, I'm imagining obviously that the 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 um, Sorry, and I see Rob's hand up. I, 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 the other thing I imagine is it probably might need a bit more contrast behind it. Maybe not as strong as on the main document, but obviously, um, uh, and there's that. Uh, sorry, Rob. I'm, I'm just wondering. Well, first of all, I think that uh, being right-handed, I like it on the right uh, because my eye tends to look toward that direction, and I'm not crossing over the document to get to the left. Uh, I used to think a lot about writing right to left and writing left uh, left to right. We try and write Arabic. Uh, if you're writing left to right, you're un the, the, you're not covering what you've just written. Uh, whereas if you're writing with your right hand left to right, you cover it. And mm -hmm. the same if you're writing left-handed in English, you're covering what you've just written. Uh, now we're not writing with our hands anymore. So that's kind of moot, but the habit lingers on. And I like the idea of having the uh, table of contents on the right for me. Mm -hmm. And I imagine that that's a hand dominant uh, thing. And I think it should be uh, thought out. What's um, interesting, Rob, is when I was learning to write left-handed, right? I was, people were trying to make me write left, right-handed, right? The nuns were especially interested in me learning to write right-handed. And what I was trying to avoid is writing like this, like a lot of left-handed people. Yeah. And so my mother forced me to learn how to write like this yeah. with my left hand. And she screamed at the nuns about the right-handed thing. <laughs> so I don't do what a lot of left-handed people do. We just cover their text with their hands as they're writing. Yeah, I've, I've seen that. Uh, uh, the other question I had was if that little mark that highlights the uh, that brings up the table of contents, does that show you where you are in the document? Yes. In other, in other words, move up, would it move up and down? Yes. Uh, to, get, to give you a sense of, yeah, now we're in uh, number three, three. Yes, exactly. Uh, I think that could be very useful. If you want to go and click on one of the uh, table of contents entries uh, and you leave the little gadget uh do you have a delay before it disappears or oh, so do you have to, to, get it, to get it to go away the notion is that this little uh, nick in the paper this little tear in the paper will always show you it'll always be there and always show you where you are in the paper so if i now click on 2.4 hypertext as literature uh, the main document will go there and this would jump up to that okay <laughs> That seems good. Um, if you if you leave the the gadget, the widget, and you go to the table of contents to select something, um, does does the table of contents stay there? It's stuck to the it again to get it to go away, or is there a delay while you select something from the table of contents to jump to? 
That's a really good question. And that's something I'm experimenting with author right now. I suggest it goes away because when you have it there, you really have time to browse it and decide where you want to go. Uh, otherwise, it becomes a sticky out a bit all the time. But that is definitely for experimentation. It makes sense, I think, to, to let it go away. Because if you're basically, if the focus, um, whether you're using a pointer or eye tracking or something, uh, maybe harder with the eye tracking, but if your focus is on the table of contents, it might be a reasonable assumption that you are either want to do something with it or you're just essentially holding to read it or scroll it or do something. Once you've moved it off, if it goes away, bear in mind it's still there, you come back on again. So I think it's it's one of those things that once discovered, it wouldn't be scary if it went away because you could just bring it back. Um, and, and therefore, if you need to see it for a longer thing, you just need to ensure that you, you're signaling by your focus to the environment that that's actually the thing that that is your your point of focus at the moment but you need some time to make the selection oh yeah but it'll be there once you point to this until you either tap on one item or you tap back on the document it'll stay okay yeah um andrew since there seems to be okayness around this is this something that's um within scope relatively early-ish uh it it well, by relatively earliest, do you mean Tuesday? Uh, because this would definitely be like something I can do. Um, I like this. I don't know if I can get it Tuesday. Um, because, it, like I said, all of this restructuring is based on um, like a lot of sort of assumptions we've already made that are now not being made. Totally fine. That's how design works. Um, but I really only have two days to work on this. So getting all of this done in two days is very difficult. Um, I, I, can, I can get can, can some go, done. I'll do my best. Can we go back and talk about what, what I suggested? And that is you and I work out a schedule for now that we know where we're headed, right? This is where we're headed. Can you and I work out a schedule that says within the next week, I can do this. The next week, I can do this. And the next week, I can do that. And that's under the proviso. We don't make any significant changes again that this is this is our roadmap now thank you froda and that we can come back at the end of the day today andrew with a schedule does that make sense sure today? we can it would be a lot of assumptions i'd be guessing a lot about how long it would take for me to oh, do of things course. Of course. Um, so if you're fine with like a rough deadline of like i think i could have this done by then then sure i think andrew you have uh, proven to us as you already had to to Dini that you don't mess around. So if you make an assumption and it's wrong, it's not because you're either stupid or not caring, it's because of the realities of software development. So I wouldn't worry about that at all. Uh, Mark. Yeah, and I think the other thing is, you know, I mean, one thing I know you are very good at, Fred, is, is these mock-ups. And I don't think we should be too shy about using some mm -hmm. static things saying, this is what we're doing. Because I think a really interesting part of the, um, of the process is actually explained to people this is actually a lot more complicated than is probably imagined i mean just take the point about trica text earlier and, and that may be a temporary constraint because that bit of technology will be done better by something else but um in other words what we're not just doing is you know as we said we're not just showing bits of paper in space and it turns out it's complicated in ways uh we don't yeah. understand so i don't think some of the static things to show people in the context of a demo uh, it, it should be taken as any way as sort of showing that we haven't made progress. It's just that it takes time to build. Uh, and then, and even then, you know, some of the things we turn out, you know, as we found on the way, turn out to be not quite what we expected. So I think, you know, um, we, we can have a bit of mix and match at this early stage. Yeah, absolutely. So now I have very specific questions for you guys. First of all, um, when you do the Adini thing of selecting text and tearing it off and having it somewhere else in the space, which is absolutely crucial, shall we call it focus or lift or something else? Focus or list? Lift. Because if, yeah. you, oh, I see. because if you do it here in what I have now, which is, of course, a different environment, I now do focus, is what I called it, and it goes in sorry it, it goes into this um uh, yeah it, it goes into a separate view uh, like this a separate window so to speak right 
I think that carries over a little bit more to our uh, XR environment. So we have the original and we have this torn off bit. What should we call it? Focus is better. You're not really lifting it. Lift would be copy temporarily. But considering you're going to be having maybe many of these, maybe in this environment, we can't copy what I've been experimenting with. We call it something like tear off or literally copy. It might also be copy, actually, despite what you just said there, Rob. You're putting a copy in a different space or post-it note or I don't know. Right. Um, Notepad or scratch pad. Beanie, what's your, when you think about this feature, when you talk to friends about it, what's it called? You're my friend. <laughs> so when you talk to us about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, I, the people I run with are doing more hypertext and elit and not VR. Um, I mean, I think focus works. I mean, there's not really a good word for what we're doing. We're moving it. We're lifting it. We're highlighting it. We're featuring it. We're focusing it. Okay, so let's let let's just simply not worry about it for now. That's fine. Because um, we have a few other things to to, to look at. So, um, so in terms of scrolling, uh, Andrew, what I think you have said you're going to do is point to the just point to it and go up and down but does it have to be laser pointer or can it be something as long as this document is in focus it is your front most thing can it be something like simply as a palm going up without having to do the gun and pointing and all of that uh hmm. so right now no but you know of course we can develop whatever we want um i i think it would have to touch to do that i wouldn't i wouldn't say just gesture at it that would we kind of tried that before with, um, if you remember, we did the swipe thing and it was a little bit tricky. People couldn't trigger it consistently. Um, so I'd say we, you'd have to be like, actually put your finger on it and scroll. Um, but that comes with some, some concerns. Uh, we have the, the closest thing we've tested with this um, was the sort of prism menu where you touch and people could not get that to work properly for them. Um, and the reason why that the touch works so well in the quest is because they have the hands, they, they feel physical. If you notice when you touch things, the hand kind of gets stuck on it and you can push your hand through, but the visual hand gets stuck and it gives a sense of physicality to things. Okay. Um, we don't have anything like that set up for ours. Right. Um, so I, I would put it on stretch goal. I'd say for now, it'll just be the pointer because that works at any distance. And we can uh, consider looking into that other stuff um, once we get all of the other important things done. That would be my my take on it. I know lots of people like touch. It's not an easy thing to add, but it it's, it's important. And I'm not saying to dismiss it. No, no, no. I, I, can we talk about, yeah, make, make a suggestion? We only have just like, I mean, Andrew and I have got to be gone pretty soon and we got we got next steps yeah and we have things that we have to get done by tuesday can you list for us what what you want and then andrew can respond with what he can deliver okay. what do you want for tuesday and, and what can andrew do and then we can leave yeah no i agree okay you can see my screen right yeah yeah okay so i'm going to say things and you if somebody disagrees tell me this spawns too high up i want it lower down i look up too much uh, so the midpoint should probably be a little bit over my head. What do you guys think? That sounds good. Okay. Uh, Andrew, are you doing notes on this particular bit? Yep. Cool. Uh, the background um, meteors are really cool, but I'm not sure if they are, they may be more distracting in here. Dini, what do you think of that aspect? Say it again, the what is? The, the little yellow lines moving about, like we. I mean, they're super cool, but are they more distracting or more cool? I actually like them. Okay, let's leave them. It, for makes, a, it makes the environment not look, um, what's the word, sterile. Yeah. Yeah, this is this is the future. Yeah. Okay, so that, that's cool. So, th so th this is obviously beautiful. So we make this um, 
when this happens, yeah, uh, very good. Should I, I disable the, because the map is just kind of slapped in there right now. Um, I feel like that should be off inside the library. No, it shouldn't. Um, maybe, It shouldn't, all right. maybe we should have, well, this is my opinion for, for everyone to discuss. Uh, what I feel we should do is um, maybe have a better layout by default, even, you know, just make sure nothing's overlapping. Um, or, or, or just leave it for now because it indicates more stuff for Tuesday at least. Okay, I'll just leave it. What I think would be nice if whatever document is not in my reading distance should be, um, the white should be transparent. And how do I know? You've done that before. Andrew did that before. So what was ever in the front was was there, and then everything else in the back became filtered. Yeah. Now, Yeah, I can I can do that again just to see what it's like. how you've done do that we? before. Uh, how do we? Um, oh, hang on. I don't know if it would look very nice. How how can I focus? Um, well, it, it's for now. It's just a retesting of layering. And it's, it's kind of a provocative new thing. So when someone looks at it, they will at least understand we're doing something different. How do I close? Because we don't have the X anymore. Uh, are you on an old version? The X should be, yeah, actually top right corner, but it's not there. So you must be on an old version. Oh, really? Okay. Well, that's Yes. not what we want. Um... So silly with those two. Right, okay, so library, open this one. No, there's no X, uh, and this is the one that's your current, I think. Yeah, it should be, unless your cache isn't cleared and you're getting some issue with that. Um, look at your hand. Do you have the mana menu? The the fingers? The left I got, palm? I got all, oh yeah, we should decide what to do with this for, okay. Um, right, so That's why if, I meant there's a lot of things that are not finished. <laughs> well, that, that's fine. So what I think we should do for next week, um, Andrew, just pick any of my layouts and change the text instead of thumb index middle so that I will tell people things will happen, but they're not there yet, just so it doesn't, so it looks like that we're doing something. And then, of course, we discuss together what should actually be there, right? And uh, also for, for Tuesday, turn off the prism. So just tapping on this will go in and out of library because it's awesome. Again, if someone disagrees, this is um, you know the time to tell. Um, but yeah, we need a. Okay, I'll go back out of this for a bit. Go to the design of uh, VR video that was dropped into Slack some time ago. really does like the risk being used. And so that what this what we're doing currently is in line with the principles that are being suggested. Yeah, the, the wrist, the, the sphere is really, really cool, but I don't think we need it for the prism. So if we just make it a library toggle, yeah, cool. Right, Yeah, so, just make that a tap rather than a hold. yeah, fine, exactly. Um, or even because the uh, the prism menu has the debug stuff right now, until I migrate that to the finger menu, which I'm working on, maybe I'll just swap the functions where tapping is the library and holding it down is the prism because no one's going to get that by accident. Okay, that's that's better. So um, the resize uh, thing, make it a little triangle in the corner, but make it only go up and down. So it has exactly the same function as you have now, but you don't have the big bar on the side. Is that easy? Um, it will be once I redesign the menu, the, the document. So, the, okay. Uh, Like one everything thing. with the document is like the whole thing has to be rebuilt to do this, um, Okay. which I will get to, but I can't just add part of it, So unfortunately. uh, can we, uh, you and Dini and me, whoever has time, can we have a half an hour meeting tomorrow or Monday uh, to go through what you've been able to do to see if there are any final small tweaks you can do for Tuesday? Would that be useful or a waste of time?
uh, we, we could tell you that tomorrow wouldn't make any sense because I don't develop today on this project. I do my other job. This is Fourth of July So, week. We have Fourth of July tomorrow. It's a big national holiday. so do we. We're celebrating a new government tomorrow. We have elections. Yeah. You got rid of your conservatives. Yeah. We're, we're voting whether we want to or not. <laughs> yes. uh, it's bad. Hey, All it's right. not as bad as ours right now. Oh my God! Don't even. I've been so depressed since the uh, since the uh, debate last week. Anyway, I think be we that have as it to. may, tomorrow is a holiday. Andrew's not working. I'm not working. Um, Yeah, no, of course nobody's not. working. Friday could work. Monday's better, probably. Yeah, Monday would make sense uh, because then I would still have part of the day Monday to I'll tell you what, um, in like our normal, still further add stuff, but I would have some progress to show. in our normal meeting on Monday, let's do the first 20 minutes on the clock on this, and then we go into general talk. Is that reasonable? Okay, this sounds Yeah, great. that sounds okay. fine. Right, so then um, counting down the minutes here, um, context menu on selected text, how far I away? gotta go. I gotta set up my own meeting. Bye, everybody. Hugs. See you, Danny. Yeah, context Uh, menu on selected selected text. text, selected text is almost impossible. Fine. Okay. Um, that would be something that we've tried several times and it just does not work. Um, I, I'm not giving up hope, but that's like a, a entire endeavor. Okay. For now, we don't need to worry about that. Um, now, at the bottom of the screen, I, I suggest, and this is a, a bit of a big thing, read outline references. Now, outline isn't just table of contents, of course. That's a very different thing. So in the outline, you would choose to see all annotations or names and all of that stuff. Uh, I'm not saying you should make that work now, but it may be useful to um, just make it a button. We have it as a button right now. Yes, uh, sorry, uh, of course we do. I, that's why I went back to this. And then the new thing is to have references here. So if you click on references, you go into an entire reference view, which we're not going to talk about today, but it indicates that references will be a first class citizen, so to speak, of a document. Um, that will solve some of our design problems, don't you think, Mark? Um, But, say again. so, so The, the notion is that we spend some real quality time on the reference view, which when you click this, it goes up to references, you can do citation mapping, all of that good stuff, connect it, and it's literally here with a button so it doesn't get lost, right? Yeah. Okay. So if you... I can swap that label easily. It won't, it, it might do something. I might not, I could probably get it to spawn the citations that just like in the space, since we already have the citations working, Sure. um, if you just want another thing. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's, let's I, th just I think it's very really useful to see some. I mean, I I know the temptation is to have something beautiful and, and perfectly polished, but I actually find it really instructive um, just to see actually how much is having to be done to get to something you'd think would be trivial. And Yes. it's a bit like my ship visit on, you know, beginning of the week of thinking, crikey, I, I had no idea it was as hard as it is. So I, w I would like body text to be a serif font, like times. I hope no one will fight me on that. Good. Um, so if we look at Mark's paper here, uh, as a, it seems to be standard that there's a sans serif heading, even though this one is a bit weird, and a serif font for the body. So if we could have sans serif for the menu here to reflect what the headings are here, And the body text and times or something similar, that would be very good. Yeah, just to be clear, all those, uh, all the documents, like the one you just showed, are actually put all the style and scripting is is reading off uh, DLACM at the moment. And I haven't I haven't fussed around with any of that at the moment. Yeah, I, I see um, Peter's notion of monospace. Yes, no, absolutely specific for that. Yeah. Uh, and then um, It does, Peter, in other in other papers where the people have used in their LaTeX where they've used monospace, it uses it. Sorry, Fred. So in the last minute, um, Andrew, tell me what you would like to focus on that you have the biggest feeling will work. Um, well, I got all those little things written down. Um, I can fairly reasonably get 
all of them with the exception of the the font change um by Tuesday. The font change is a maybe. Um I, I think there's a good chance that I can get that by Tuesday, but I can't commit to it. Um all the document changes aside from like just swapping the labels and things like that. Uh I can't get that by Tuesday. Um and ideally I would also have the sort of the, the push pull thing working for the changing snap distances. But um, I might just temporarily turn that feature off. And so that way we don't get like the sort of broken version in the demo. Right. Get the other stuff polished, send that in. And then if I can, then I'll, I'll sort of put my effort back into that after the Tuesday demo. That might be what, the way it goes. Um, because I think the push-pull thing can get... Um, A lot of the issues I'm having with the document for it can be fixed when I redesign the document because I'll design it with this in mind. Okay. Uh, so I think it's kind of killing two birds with one stone, but it's not something I can just throw together in a week. So that would be um, sort of a, a longer development thing. Yeah, that, that's fine. Thank you. Um, questions. Um, what I would like is for the design of the document reading view to get as close to this as possible, meaning if you can remove any black outlines. Um, Yeah, just... if it's just turning stuff off, I can do that. Um, functionally, it won't change, unfortunately. And No, the no. um, the the drag bar is still going to be on the left. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, unfortunately, but there we go. That's reality. So I'm just going to go back into... Um... Back into this to just okay. Uh, I need to share that with this with you guys. No, not home cinema. Uh, okay, here we go. Uh, one question that we should consider if we're moving the menu bar from the left to the bottom, uh, are we also moving that that sliding bar for the citations? Or we just we don't know what the citations are going to look like? I guess they're kind of a work in progress thing because it doesn't really make sense to put those on the bottom. They're really tall. So and having the um, drag handle in different spots, depending on what you're looking at, kind of doesn't make sense either. Just something to keep in mind for long term. We can't answer it now because I have to go. Okay, uh, I have no idea what you're talking about, but cool. Right. Okay, yeah, just remove the <laughs> the gray bars around, and um, can you make the, the 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 scroll arrows just white so they disappear? So we just do. So we yeah. Anyway, I'll see you on Monday. Look forward to that. Yep. Happy Fourth of July. Yes. Happy Independence Day from us. <laughs> yes. Very quickly, Fred. Yes. Um, who are you demoing to on uh, Tuesday? Uh, you, I hope. Well, I was going to say I, I can probably make it across. I, I looking at, at cast at the diary, but what was the? Is this showing some folk in waste or? No, no, it's um, all the faculty of the university. Oh, cool. Okay, yeah, it's, it's a big deal, and um, I, I could I'll get have... around. I'll get around with the offertory plate then, doing the silent collection. <laughs> yeah. Hang on, I just got some awful spam there. They're really fishing these spammy people. You know, I, I think that was useful. Um, I think we we need to. Oh, uh, yeah. Sorry, I didn't see him leave. Uh, I think it's it's good to alternate between polishing what we have and thinking further. So yeah, that was good. Yeah, no, I, I honestly, I, I actually think that um, the 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 so design once we got into it, I think I think the thing I took away from from the today, funnily enough, was. Um, that the until explained that the accordion bit wasn't self evident, which is not a critique of the design, it's more that it's just a thing of signaling. Um, and you know, that, that so that's done. I think that I, I actually think it's a really quite elegant design. I think getting the top and bottom will take time, but I, I, I that doesn't worry me because that's necessary polish, which is predictable, but you can get the general outline of what it does. I really liked your idea of a sort of movable nick, which gives us back. essentially some of the scroll bar bits we otherwise need and we don't need a bloody scroll bar but we've got something that's proxy I've, i think the stepping out um method of triggering the toc um looks really good obviously don't de be in the detail in terms of doing it but i think that makes sense and and as and as um andrew said you know and then and we can work out sort of how we deal with the references 
I, I must say my own exp exploration of the sort of last week is has been what an insight it has been sort of forcing myself to get get down into the how the sort of html stuff works um because it not all of it is good <laughs> um but i think it's really interesting in terms of thinking about what we might be able to do a really interesting thing is if you look at my 2022 paper which we have in in html and we have as a pdf one of the things i was thinking when i looked at the html i thought well why do i need to now sort of signal things because in the html the pictures are put where i put them in the original text it's only when it's compiled as LaTeX and it does its print packing do all the pictures end up on a different page. Mm. So the need to do some of the uh, contingent display is perhaps less pressing than I thought. In any way, it's not our, it's not our immediate thing. But uh, th that was interesting. But I I found some real telltale stuff that, um, without being challenged you know, about the coding, but for instance, every time they go through a heading, they just start a new section. And it has it's given an ID, so it's just section. So when you go from you know two point three, which is section four, you go to uh, section three, which is now five. Well, who the hell's going to know what five is? You know, if you wanted to address it, so they haven't really thought through the semantic labelling yet, um, and it's frustrating that um, they do tooltips for references, but they don't do tooltips for footnotes. Um, to which the question, I, I guess I'm pretty certain it probably meant that it was designed by somebody who doesn't use footnotes. Um, but, you know, again, that's all fixable going forward. Begs a question, two things you might know. Well, um, one is somebody was asking, well, in what form is the data held in DLACM? And I have no idea. Um, I, but it, it'll be interesting to know because one of the, the one of the other things that screams out at me is, like, not in the next few months. Sorry, go ahead. I can tell you. Uh, they have XML spreadsheets for all of them. But that's basically as, as far as I've been told when I talk. Yeah, it, it's sort of thinking about that. Obviously, not tomorrow, but if 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 a publisher, be it the ACM or somebody else, sort of wanted to do something more flexible, it's you could consider when, when we were talking about okay, well, if I could hint that this is all, as it were, the stuff about research question one for sake of argument, um, being able to pull that via an API would be interesting, um, and in advance of that, it's I'm thinking. But using the HTML as a proxy, so okay, so what you know, what what do you need to put in because it it goes all the way back down the pipe to the author and the authoring tools that we're needing to enhance for this sort of writing. Um, so there's, there's some really interesting ideas. I mean, one of the things that I was spitballing with with Dave, and I might look at for next week for next year as my research thing would be to um, take a paper, probably one of mine, simply because I sort of have all the bits. Uh, and rewrite it using R, R Markdown and R Shiny. And what that allows you to do is effectively, you although you're working inside a programming environment, you basically write in Markdown, which has most of the basic affordances we want in style terms. Uh, and that can go out to later, can make a, a document when you need a document record, but you can use another plugin called R Shiny and you can make basically interactive HTML. So you could not only have the HTML and probably more nicely done than the ACM thing. But even we could, I, I'm I'm keen to sort of tinker with having graphs that could have a, a like a proxy picture, um, but a, a, a maybe an active thing behind it. Because you're old enough to remember, you know, early days in Netscape, you used to have the low res came down to show a picture on the screen while the actual main picture was loading. And I think, you know, that's another metaphor. And again, within the, the sort of the malleable, flexible um, XR space. These are the sorts of things I think we can begin to do. All jam tomorrow, but um, I'm I found it a, a very interesting the sort of recent discussions and how they're opening up, how we might use our uh, so certainly for sort of professional writing, being an, be it academic or you know doing documentation for a hospital or a aircraft company or something. So I'll bring down the headset, of course, on Tuesday. That's you know that's why I'll be there. But I do think you need some more time with the vision. Uh, um, just... Yeah, yeah. I, I, I can if I come across, I can bring my obviously I can bring the the quest. So, so what, what, what? When are you doing it, and where? Um, it's a good question. 
I'm well, gonna... I don't need to know the second, but if you let me know oh, sort it, of it, roughly it, what time of day. It's totally fine. It's going to be... Uh, uh, 12. 12 on Tuesday. As in, I need to be there at 12. Um, I think it starts at 1. What is going on with this update here? I've had this really difficult bug. Yeah. Did you? Uh, I'll see if they managed to fix it. They didn't even tell me. I have, did you do the encounter dinosaur? You weren't here, were you, in the house with this? Uh, no, no, no. It's a shame. Okay, because... Um, Okay, I'll show you this. Then. This is relevant to what we're talking about. So if I go to space vision, come on. Yeah, here it is. Yeah, it, it is clearly 3D. You know, it's really cool. You know, I, I can. Yeah, yeah. What was happening over there? Okay, launch. Uh, uh, by the way, you 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 may have guessed one other one other thing. I thought one other the one. Oh, hey, that's oh, that's neat. Yeah. One of the other things, well, so that Chinese record uh, rocket that launched in the wrong place has just gone through your dining room ceiling. <laughs> yeah, that's making Israel very upset because they were buying these things. But uh, All right. let me see. Oh, that, that's the base that's still on the floor. So is it now where is my control for viewing something else in this environment? It doesn't, it's just really bizarre. Oh, come on. Yeah. Right, so I, I do this. Okay, let's let's look at globes. Yeah. Oh, this is something I want. Oh, we're doing a restart now. Great. The, the globes thing, I did actually want to show in the meeting and talk about it because there's two ways you can um, just have to go to test flight first. You, you can see me again, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I can see screen. Um, yeah, the, the globes thing. I get all these globes to choose from. It's very cool. I'm going to choose that one. Yeah. And it's, it's quite nice. And I can do these things, which, you know, it's, the rendering quality is just absolutely outstanding. Um, yeah. You can do two finger things. Uh, then and no ads yet. <laughs> yeah. But here, okay, so I stop it going and then I do this. Yeah. And look at this. I'm inside the globe. Cool. It is really cool because it's actually useful. And I don't know how my brain can deal with that, but it is, it doesn't cause any cognitive dissonance of this is not the world because it is, as you can see, it's wrapped to face me. So it's obviously, if you view it from the outside, it's wrong. You know, exactly. So they've reversed it. Yes. Yeah. But it, because if you were literally viewing from the inside or back front, yeah, yeah. Because it works so well. So that was a surprise. But uh, it, 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 it's nice. Funnily enough, viewing it from the inside is interesting because you can you can see if you're viewing it from the outside, you can't see around the back of the globe. So when you're looking, you know, halfway, if you're looking from America to Europe, sort of thing, it's yeah. quite hard because this planet's in the way. So inside, you can actually get a sense of 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 that distance and space. Yeah. But you still have this weird kind of control area to go to. Okay, this is exciting. You're the first person to see this. So this is this. No, it still cannot. So, so this is all through in XR. Yeah. Yeah. So the, obviously this is supposed to not be floating like this. I don't know what they've actually done because, okay. The toolbar won't disappear. And for me, visually, that's important. See, nothing happens. When I go to set. So, which tool? When you say the toolbar. But on top. You mean the black bit at the top? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, got it. Yeah, yeah. To, yeah. to me, that's quite disruptive and old fashioned. But if I now go to settings and help, I go to user guide. That has a close button on it. That's okay. That's good. If I close here, Yeah. I mean, one, one thing that is nice now, I can actually do this. So let me just close these other things. So if I'm now writing in the desert, this mm -hmm. is not so bad. Yeah. 
I guess I can have it back in the uh, app store. The problem is we have um, the document format here doesn't is not fully compatible with. Um, uh, hang on. And just a quick question: the the movement that I'm seeing is presumably because because I'm outside the environment, so it tracking essentially your head so you're not seeing the the apparent sort of jerking around that I've, it's not it's not you know impossible to watch or anything but that's presumably um not seen by you because that's effectively the the environment adjusting to you exactly right um and that's that's why i wanted to have a camera inside what hang on i'm just going to jump to metadata boom so that works uh, that's why I wanted to have a camera inside what Andrew's building. So if someone sees it from the outside, they don't get all this person's head. You no, know, I, I couldn't agree more because I actually think that we're at such an early stage that almost being able to show somebody before they put the look, this is what's roughly what you're going to see when it arrives, I think would 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 help a lot to get over the thing where somebody puts it on immediately. They've got a whole host of questions. And the sort of the moment of wonder is lost because they're sort of saying, what's that button for? Or how do I do this? But being able to say, look, you'll see this, you'll see something shown in front of you. Um, and so when they put it on, that's actually what they see. I think could be quite useful until more people are used to the environment. Um, but you're absolutely right. Having something where you can film from inside so you don't get this apparent um, camera movement yeah. um, would be useful. I assume that's not possible at the moment. No, by the way, this is the new environment with the O2, with the version two. Uh, isn't that amazing? Cool. It's boring yeah. on a beach. Yeah, I mean, and it, and it makes I, I, it makes a valid point that you know if that's what you if that's what you still want at the moment. So the whole thing of you know, sitting on the mountains or reading the book, it it absolutely delivers on that. Yeah. Um, when you want it so I, so I, so I, I the great thing is i see none of these things as you know being fixed i think what i what 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 i'm learning is is it's contextual and not in a bad way um so good oh by the way before i forget you you may have guessed but another part of my impetus of finally knuckling down to do this uh rebuilding a seven hypertext in the acm html is because it's got a ton of references into the corpus I thought it might be useful for Adam to play with, even if just on his own. But Ooh. you know, because uh, okay. my, my my long term view is something interesting will come out of it. Yeah, um, I just realised I got to go down to dinner. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Anyway, great. Well, thanks for today. Um, I will bear Tuesday in mind. I didn't think because I don't think I, I I should be able to come over. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. I hope you will. I'm going to have this set up for review now. It's good enough. Um, it still hasn't fixed the final thing, but there you go. Okay, I will update this and have it very um, mangled by AI. Actually, the last few has, have been pretty good. But anyway, um, see you on Tuesday and talk to you on Monday. Bye.